What concerned me with Luke Doty, and again, is this a coaching issue? Is this a Luke Doty issue? Where does this all stem from? But being as low as I was in the stadium, you know, when you're on the 10th row, you can see a lot of things you can't see from a different vantage point in regards to like, you know, uh, uh, body language and emotion and the way the players are interacting with one another, all that good stuff. And I'm sure you may have seen it on TV, by the way, with Luke Doty and Eric Douglas on more than one occasion were jawing back and forth. And Eric Douglas was not very happy with Luke Doty. And I'm assuming this was due to, like you've mentioned before in previous weeks, protection calls, not being on the same page, just pure discombobulation, right? And because it's, it's looking bad on the O-line. We've been putting it all on the O-line this season. But seeing that, I started to think, oh, no. Like, is there, is there some confusion, even on Luke's end, that, that we're not giving enough credit to? And it's like, I guess my thought was like, how can this still be happening in week seven? You know, how can this still be happening? Um, either way, we know Luke Doty's probably out this week. When you looked at his game, though, again, I, I'm not throwing away number four because of one bad performance. I think his career here can still be great, and he had one bad game. Everybody has a bad game. Is It is what it is. But, again, it's sort of one of those things, like you mentioned, man, it, it's really hard to find the words, I guess, because I guess it's just so shocking uh, at the performance. But any major takeaways from Luke Doty and what you saw? And is there uh, – what, what are your thoughts on, on again, that, that takeaway, that analysis I had? Like I said, just I, I think there's – there's definitely something to be said about the miscommunication and the issues going on between Doty, the O-line, probably the coordinator. It, it's just it's just bad all the way around. Yeah, that's – and I think uh, – let me let me backtrack on what we talked about several weeks ago when, you know, somebody told me that, that you know, the quarterback's making the protection call at the line and that just needs to stop. It wasn't like – I didn't mean to have that come out like it was I, – I was blaming the offensive line for miscues. Like – I don't think a freshman quarterback needs to be making those calls in all those situations. I mean, that's got to be something that's coming down from the top for him until he kind of recognizes that stuff or you have some more faith in it. I think probably what you saw on the sidelines was just that playing completely out where we're making the wrong protection call or putting somebody in a bad position to where they can't do their job from a protection standpoint, from a run blocking standpoint. So that was really, I didn't mean for that to you know come down entirely on the line. That's really a quarterback O line problem that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, as for his performance, like okay, so I, I'm getting some really like weird parallels here to what year was it? this? Was two years ago, 2019? Whenever you know Holinsky had looked like he had the knee issue or the elbow issue that he got hurt earlier in the year, and the ball started sailing, and it wasn't looking like that was, you know, meshing the way it should have been. I have a very similar vibe to what we've been watching here recently, but like in mostly just because we don't know for sure what the extent of that foot injury is. And that plant foot is big for quarterbacks. And if that's uncomfortable, you start to, you know, you know, anybody that's ever been in a repetitive motion game of perfection, so to speak, you know, it's like for you pitching, like if you're, if you're push leg, if there's something wrong with that, oh, yeah. you're going to compensate for what hurts mm -hmm. you there somewhere else. And then, like, all that can snowball on you when the accuracy gets off, you get into bad habits and things like that. I think that happened to Holinsky two years ago. I think, again, not knowing, like, how severe this was, I think that could be happening to Luke here because, you know, what we were supposed to see from him was this, like, dynamic dual-threat quarterback that's got, you know, all the wheels in the world that he's, you know, not really used at all this season. And so it kind of makes you question like, okay, why is that happening? And then you start to look at some of the accuracy issues that are sitting out there. I mean, he threw, he threw a great ball to Jaheim. He played well in the first quarter and then things kind of went sideways. Did he get, <laughs> this is going way deep in the weeds, but are they, you know, numbing that to start the game and it starts wearing off? Like what, there's some things amiss there. I don't know what it is. And I may be reading way too much into that, but that's just kind of my take. And, you know, in a similar vein, you know, Kevin Harris hasn't looked anything like he did last year. <laughs> what kind of back surgery did he have in the off season? Mm -hmm. Who could say, but something's off there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if that's the case with Luke, he doesn't need to play anymore until that gets better because it's not serving anybody any good right now to have him trying to, you know, play hero ball at 75%. When if we have just as good chance with Zeb standing back there 
let him play until you get better.